Welcome to Expo 67, to man and his world. This is the Canadian Pavilion. Canada is a complex country, diverse in heritage, and the Pavilion is a reflection of this diversity. It doesn't tell the whole story of what we are, but it shows something of our culture, our traditions, and our place in the 20th century. Here are cultural contributions from the first Canadians. Two young Eskimos from Cape Dorset carve these murals in plaster. These are sculptures by unknown Indian artists from the past. Our European traditions. The explorers who came to this country, Cabot, Cartier, Champlain, and many others. They were the first Europeans to explore this vast continent. Another kind of pioneer, the works of contemporary Canadian painters who are gaining increasing recognition at home and abroad. Canadian handicrafts, our enamels, jewelry, and many other forms of art. An experiment in art by a group of young Canadian artists. It combines shape and movement with light and sound. This section deals with the conquest of our natural environment. It shows how our innumerable resources are being exploited. Water is a source of hydroelectric energy and of food. A third of the world's fresh water is in Canada. These are fish ladders on dams to help migrating salmon.
the geological court. Mineral samples from all parts of Canada. And a map showing the wealth that lies under our farms and forests. Hundreds of thousands of trees are cut each year, yet the Canadian forest remains inexhaustible. It covers half our land. Wood is one of our greatest natural resources. Chemistry, biological science and reforestation protect our trees from insects, disease and fire. Wherever trees have fallen, new ones will grow to replace them. We have to exploit and transform these riches. A whole range of energy resources are at the disposal of Canadian industry. Here we are using atomic symbols to demonstrate the breaking down of uranium. Heat is produced, which in turn produces power. Canada is very successful in the economic use of nucleoelectric power. A gay Canadian painting illustrating the tides, the winds and the sun as sources of energy used since time began and still to be harnessed by man. Though privileged in natural resources, we have our problems with climate and the immense scale of this country. The solution is in communications and transport. Reaching across the continent by the printed word, Canadian literature, and television, of course. Canada has the largest microwave network in the world. Visual communications work as a team with a computer. communicating by sound waves, spanning the continent. This monster is known as the transportation machine. It was built from driving parts of all sorts of moving vehicles. our well-known Canadian wheat, transported to anywhere in the world. This third section deals with the obstacles and challenges of today. In the age of electronics, knowledge explosion and automation, Canadians are facing a changing world. They must keep on learning the things that are continually being discovered. They must master the new tools which extend the power of the human brain. Perhaps in the future, science and technology may bring complete freedom from work, but already leisure is an important part of life in Canada. And here are the tourists. We mustn't let them down. There are certain kinds of pictures they just have to take home.
good. There are a lot of pleasant eating places in the Canadian Pavilion. Two snack bars by the lagoon for outdoor picnics. And the indoor buffet with its large mural and gay butterfly birds. The proudest feature of the pavilion is the Kati Mavik. The word means meeting place in Eskimo. It is a huge inverted pyramid, the height of a nine-story building. An open hand towards the sky, it symbolizes the Canadian people reaching for a better future. These masks and measuring instruments are examples of the victory of man over himself, over nature, over time and space. Sculpture Court. These works were especially created for the pavilion by Canadian artists. This giant tree reflects the colors of autumn in Canada's national symbol, the maple. But it won't lose its leaves in the Canadian winter. They are made of nylon. The 500 leaves are photographs of Canadians in their everyday life. We call it the people tree. the children's creative center. Here, youngsters aged 3 to 11 enjoy themselves playing and learning at the same time. They are encouraged to express themselves in music, art and drama.
There are also sophisticated games which appeal to any age. The most modern techniques are applied against the rigors of our Canadian climate. Just behind the pavilion, a miniature icebreaker rescues a model freighter caught in the ice flows. Young people are attracted to the open-air theatre. The whole concept of the pavilion recognises the fact that half of Canada's population is under the age of 25. The Canadian Pavilion at Expo 67 reflects a spirit of youth, ambition and optimism. <laughs>